Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video, I actually just started this beachhead, but I tried recording and I thought I was recording, but I wasn't recording. So, but anyway, in this video, I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about my thoughts on Harbinger League and a little bit of like, kind of like beta thoughts, but like previous beta, mainly though the Harbinger League itself. Um, so Harbinger League in general, at first, when it first came out, I didn't really know what to expect of it. Um, I knew GDG wasn't going to do something super invasive because, you know, with a 3.0 expansion, they didn't want to basically tell players like, you know, here you go, just, you know, continuously die like an invasion league <laughs> over and over. They wanted to introduce, like, this slow mechanic to them and, uh, you know, as the league progresses, they can kind of adjust it, which I think they've been doing a great job with. So my initial thoughts... When they first came out, I really liked the design of it. I thought the design was pretty cool. I never really was too scared of them, but I thought it was just nice because anything that really adds density to maps, I honestly don't mind, especially because they can actually drop maps. I think if the Harbingers were not able to drop maps, I'd be like, this is kind of lame, but, you know, because of the fact that they can drop maps, they do have, I mean, they're like kind of important, I guess you could say, through your mapping progression if you choose to kill them. Then, later on down the line, they, add, they decided to buff their drop rate, which I still kind of think, like, their drops are kind of like a meme. It's like shards. I don't really understand the point in shards. Um, but, I mean, I guess it's fun for some people to do. But the main thing that they did is they increased their spawn rate, like, drastically. So, if you can see now, he spawned, like, one, two, three sets. Uh, which is, like, pretty amazing. I think before they would spawn probably, like, 40% slower. Maybe even, like, two times as slow. So this rapid spawning actually made it a lot more fun to fight these Harbinger mobs, but more importantly, it actually makes them a lot more dangerous when you're running like T15 maps. For this map specifically, the T15 Beachhead, it's not too terrifying. Uh, it's actually like really not even that scary, mainly because there's no damage mods on it, which I think is okay. Uh, but like when you're running T15 maps now, because I think the Harbinger mobs are a bit more tanky than your regular mobs, they can be pretty terrifying if, say, the Harbinger decides to raise like... I don't know, three packs of mobs, and then you get like a sub fizz whipper with a crit accuracy aura um, with like an extra physical mob. And that can happen, they could just all spawn within like maybe three or four seconds. And I kind of like the feeling of being scared again. Uh, even though it doesn't happen often, it still is just one extra thing to pay attention to that won't necessarily instantly kill you. So I'm always down for mechanics like that. Now let's talk about like the currency a little bit. The currency, uh, the new types of currency, I can actually go over and hover over them really fast for you guys to see. There is the Harbinger's Orb, which reforges a map item uh, of another tier higher, which basically what that allows you to do is take like this shape bog as T13, upgrade it to a random tier 14 map with a chance of it becoming a beachhead map, which is pretty nice. There's also the Orbs of Horizon, which reforges a map um, as another tier of the same item. So say for example, you didn't want to run Abyss as a T15 You could just shape or use the Orb of Horizon and change it to something completely different uh, We've got engineering orbs, which I don't think have too much of a purpose. They improve the quality of a strong box So improving the quality of a strong box would basically be for things like Arcanist boxes uh, and on top of Arcanist boxes you have ones like um, Diviners boxes so you could get 20% quality on those before you roll it uh, a really popular and, I guess, well-loved one throughout the community, although is extremely cheap, is the Orb of Binding, because it upgrades a normal item into a rare with up to four sockets. Uh, or sorry, four sockets that are linked. The great thing about this is anytime you're like, you, you basically are going to craft an upgrade, you could just Orb of Binding it and then scour it and you have a four socket four link. Anytime you're leveling and you look at something that you want, like, you know, like, oh, let's gamble gloves, you could just slam it and then potentially get really lucky. So I really do enjoy this currency. I don't like how prevalent they are right now compared to like all the other things, but I do believe that when we're finished with Harbinger League, the currencies will become quite a bit more rare. Uh, and because of them becoming a bit more rare, uh, their value will kind of come back, which will be really nice because these are going for less than an alk right now. We also have the annulment, which the or orb of annulment, which is like a reverse exalted orb, which removes a property from an item. Really cool for crafting. Uh, this is something that I've played around with a little bit with my jewel crafting, and it's pretty nice as well. Uh, I'm very happy to see this currency, to be honest, opposed to like the eternal orb. I really like this route. And then I don't remember what else there is. <clears throat> There's the Ancient Orb, which reforges an item as another property, uh, or sorry, as another type. So like you could take this Brisk Wrap and potentially get almost any chess piece in the game. 
Um, I've been gambling flasks. I ended up pulling out a roomies, but unfortunately, they're only like a couple chaos. So that's just pretty cool overall. Uh, I have really been enjoying the new currency types. I apologize if I missed one. Um, I think we went over majority of them. So let me just get back into the map and finish this. And then there's the unique items. The unique items uh, drop as components out of this map that we're running right now. Um, so the components, I think there's like, is it four pieces to combine to create it? And there's quite a few different types. There's a belt, a chest piece, uh, there is a staff, uh, a sword, a shield. Did I say helmet? I don't even remember. I may have said a couple things multiple times. Now, alongside with like all the stats and bonuses that these items give, you can find them on the PoE Wiki if you just look up the Harbinger Uniques. I'm sure somebody in the chat will be more than happy, or comments, to, uh, to link them, Kappa. But um, what I was going to say is they basically add like really good stats, uh, very little downsides. And they have a uh, kind of like a unique effect attached onto them, which summons a Harbinger Unique. And that's kind of like the Harbingers that follow you around. Now... The cool thing about them is it's like a, it's basically like a golem that can't ever die, uh, to my knowledge. The bad thing about them that I kind of do not like is that the buffs they give you are like temporary. And I don't really know how I feel about the whole temporary buffs in Path of Exile. And when I say temporary buffs, I mean things like, um, you know, you gain 10% physical damage mitigation for 4 seconds on an 8 second cooldown. I'm not really too much of a fan of inconsistency with this game. And the only reason why I say that is there are things that, you know, do ridiculous amounts of damage in Path of Exile. And it's important to understand, you know, how much damage you're actually mitigating because when you're mapping, I mean, just take an example of what I'm doing right now. Can you honestly see every single monster that's popping up? Like, I don't even know what the rare mob was there or there. You know, I can't even see the auras of the mobs popping up. And I think it's a lot more reliable to just maybe like have the values, but know that for a fact you have the actual mitigation or damage buff and, and whatever. So that's kind of like my only thing I, do, I dislike. I don't really mind it for offensive buffs. Like the Elementalist, for example, has like, um, you know, uh, I forgot what it's, Pendulum of Destruction, I think it's called. Oh man, this, what the fuck? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> There's like a super hasted powerful crit mob in there. There's an example of things you just cannot see. I actually am like kind of spooked now. There we go. This is this map is definitely quite a bit more fun with the new uh, the new Harbinger changes. These guys are coming out pretty fast. Also, I don't know if you guys were aware or not. I thought they buffed the drop rates again. They didn't buff the drop rates. They just made it so that animate weapon can like animate stuff in here now, which is pretty nice. So I guess overall, um, I'm pretty happy with the league. I'm nothing really too uh, negative to say about it. Um, it's definitely not like a crazy big league. It's like a Another filler league, I would say, but I am very happy with the currency updates that they've kind of introduced into the game. Just overall, I think it's just, it's really good for solo cell found. It's really good for people who don't like trading that much like me. Um, so, I mean, overall, I'm actually pretty happy. I was pretty sad to see like a bunch of negative things come out of it. Um, so one thing I want to talk about that I feel people don't even realize about this, and this is kind of what I was talking about before with like beta and not really Harbinger, but this is more in line with like the 3.0 expansion. They did like a pretty big revamp or overhaul or balance change, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, for mapping in general. So like the Atlas of Worlds 2.0 expansion. They redid the density in quite a few of the maps uh, overall. And the reason why that's really good is because it kind, of, it kind of shifts the meta a little bit. And if you notice, not a lot of people are running the same maps anymore. Some people are like, oh, I like running race course. Other people are like, well, fuck you, I don't want to run race course because there's not enough mobs. I'm going to stick to Strand. Uh, I don't remember the other ones people run specifically, but I know, like, just in general, all over the place, like, people are shaping maps left and right to try different strategies. And people are coming to the conclusion that it's okay if you shape different things because different builds are designed, you know, differently. So, like, for example... Oh, we got a mask piece. Hell yeah. So, for example, as Righteous Fire... Um, I personally really fucking hate the Temple Boss. And Temple Boss is a T9 map, so if you were to shape it, it would be T14. Uh, and what that guy does is he basically fights you in this tiny little midget room that you have no space to run in, and he puts down a Vortex. And knowing me, I always run like minus max and vulnerability maps, 
So I'm already taking an in, well, I'm already taking damage to my life pool, and then he puts down a vortex, and I degen. I just don't like that boss. I also don't like crypt boss, which is like a T14 map, because if you use a curse on him, he sets out like a bunch of wolves and just gets super mad at you. But on the flip side, I know people that are like, "What are you talking about, dude? I love crypt. Like that T14 man, I shaped the hell out of that. That's my favorite map." And I'm like, "What? Like you like crypt? Are you crazy?" Uh, and there's like a bunch of people, for example, that really like that map. And I really like seeing a bunch of different variety as well uh, coming into the game. Even though I know that there is there's quite a few people playing certain things, there's always going to be a meta in the game. But I think that once people really get a little bit further into the league and they start generating some wealth, they'll be able to create a bunch of different builds. And I'm sure we'll see that here really soon. So props to GGG. I'm very happy with how they've been handling uh, the 3.0. The only really negative thing I have to say is the servers have just been fucking utter trash uh, for a little while, but I mean, that's something they can always improve on, and I'm hoping that now since the Xbox has been released and the 3.0 expansion is out, and they have announced their new expansion that's coming in the next patch, it's more of like a mini expansion, not patch, uh, sorry, new league, I think that they have, you know, they, they basically like, they're ready to go. They got most of their shit out of the way. It's time to like stop making empty X's <laughs> and and clean up the game and polish it a little bit. So hopefully, you know, everything is gonna be well with that. But I just wanted to update you guys a little bit. Let me know what you guys wanna see for some YouTube content. Uh, I apologize I haven't put out too much stuff. I've just mainly been leveling the RF guy. You can see here is 97 at 82%. So we are nearing uh, level 98 and I don't really wanna just keep uploading me running maps over and over every single day. So you guys let me know what you wanna see. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.